Hey guys, today we are going to go over nine cards that have recently gone up in price. And this is a interesting and diverse batch of them. So we will start with the card that has been dominating standard. This is the new Gideon Ally Zendikar, but it is in red. Great card, definitely one that if you play first, you have a advantage. Reminds me of a more control burn not a traditional burn, but nonetheless, very high power, indestructible haste, and discarding cards for extra damage is very good. Now, the card has spiked from its pre-low of under $5 to $17. The foil is still very inexpensive. If you are going to buy the foil, I suggest buying, going ahead and buying the Amarket Invocation foil. That one is very beautiful looking and the price difference is, there is a price difference, but I think it's worth spending the extra money just to have a copy that is unique and masterpieces are not going to be reprinted anytime soon. So next, Captain Sisse. I've always wondered why this card was like a bulk card and it was a bulk card for a long, long time. Now it is averaging $16. It is on the trend down, but even trending down, the card is still going to be amazing. It tutors for legends or legendary cards, which can include lands, and tutors are right into your hand. So it's demonic tutoring, assuming your deck is mostly legends, for a legendary land, for another legend. That is very, very good. And, and depending on your playgroup, if your playgroup is not overly aggressive, you will get tremendous value from this. Um, you just get each turn, you tutor, and there's a lot of green effects that allow it to untap for relatively no cost. And you can grab exactly what you need in terms of comboing out. This is the prime example of a card that until recently was way undervalued for no reason. Now, is it a $16 card? I don't think so. I do believe it is a $40 foil though. I think that price is correct. But good card. Another card that was way undervalued in terms of what it does, of how powerful it is, and the synergy it offers is this one. So it was reprinted. Um, after it was reprinted, it tanked a ton in price. Uh, Fifth Dawn, I believe it was reprinted in Conspiracy Take the Crown. If I had to guess, that's where the reprint came from. Or Conspiracy 1. It might have been Conspiracy 1. Regardless, this is a very, very good card. And it was undervalued until it was below $5. And even at one point, it was at $3 in some sense. Overall, one of the things about powerful cards is even if it sees reprint, that is the time to buy them. Uh, buying them at that particular moment in time is, if you believe in the card, that's where you go. And there will be cards in the Commander 2017 decks that will have this same, especially the reprinted cards. I'm looking at Dra Euro Dragon or Scion of the Euro Dragon. I'm looking at Marcella. Uh, there's a lot of great reprints in that set. Next, uh, let's take a look at the Lodestone Bobble. Because why not? If all the bobbles were going up, then it only makes sense for the rare bobble to also peak. This was probably a quarter, maybe less than a quarter. I mean, you can see that it was like 15 cents. Now it is $5. Is it amazing? Uh, no. But it is a zero cost cost artifact that you pay one to sacrifice it. So I guess it's okay. Um, I, I don't know. Like it's, it seems like it's not going to really do much. You're probably going to just play it for the draw potential. But getting an artifact in your graveyard is obviously good for Tamagoyf. It's good for any of the delve mechanics. And it, it costs zero, right? I mean that those cards, it costs zero and you can cycle it and draw a card. It does have some incremental benefit in that if you do have up to four basic land cards from any graveyard's grave from any player's graveyard on top of his or 
I don't know if that's what you want to be doing. I don't know how you even got four land in a graveyard that fast, or even in one land. Next, Vengevine. This card has now gone up in price. It is a unique card. And you can see that its price graph is something that you typically don't see. It goes up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, back up. And it has raw power. It's one of those cards when Golgari Grave Troll was banned. It actually didn't affect the price on this that much. Um, it, it wasn't seeing all that much play in those decks. The Dredge decks did not use this as a win condition. It is very, very powerful in the right deck, but I don't know. It just hasn't found the right deck yet. And I feel like it needs like more copies of it. So right now you can get four copies of it, and which is good. But you probably need some other cards that do very similar effects to encourage you to dump these creatures in your graveyard. Um, but overall, it is a strong card. It is something where it has the haste, which is important, and it can win games out of nowhere. It's just the fact that there's only a maximum of four of them, and there's only 16 damage. Next, a uh, Void Mage. Makes sense. I mean, wizards are always very good, and the fact that you can counter spells with this wizard is not bad. Uh, the premium quality, the Magic Player Rewards, will be the premium version of it. It's going to be very, very... I think this is going to be a more valuable card than $6. But then again, it has spiked from $2 to $6, so that's very, very good. Uh, I think overall, it will have the potential to keep rising, and it is something to keep... I don't know that there's that many copies of this card. Now, the problem is Void Maids is not considered very strong right now. But should the Wizard deck really want this in its 100 and really want to push it, then this is the premium version of it, which would really spike. It's already doubled in price, which many cards in their whole life, doesn't. they don't do that. So already expensive, but I think it has a lot of room to grow. And the growth would be dependent solely on your wizard deck. Because it itself is a very wizard-centric card. Now next, we have Nim Death Mantle. This is becoming more and more played in the zombie decks in EDHs. So it makes the zombie, it gives it plus two, plus two, gives it Intimidate, and makes it a zombie. And whenever a non-creature, non-creature, non-token creature is put into your graveyard from the battlefield you may pay for if you do return that card to the battlefield and attach it with it so that is very very good it has to be your graveyard but paying for it kind of breath of life it and it makes it difficult i'm positive there's an infinite combo on this it seems like something where it would definitely be infinite combo but four is a lot four is a lot to pay for uh, I, I'm not sure what type of mechanic would allow you to pay four every time you sacrifice something. Unless, of course, a creature you sacrifice, you're getting, gaining five mana, right? And you're, that would give you infinite mana here if you have two of them. I don't know. It's just a very, it's a very decent card in EDH and something to keep your eye out on. It's no longer the bulk price it used to be. Next, uh, Chalice of the Void. This card has continued to go up, up, up. And I would not be surprised to see a reprint on this card soon. Wizards of the Coast, which I agree with their re reprint policy, has been very, very aggressive on reprints. Uh, we saw Nin, the Pain Artist. We saw Marcella. We saw your uh, Dragon, Scion of the Your Dragon. We've seen Mary's Wake. These are all very, very good cards that have been reprinted. Urza's Incubate. All these cards are, once they, when they put their mind to it, they can reprint pretty much anything. And this is what's going to happen soon. I think Chalice of the Void is definitely something that I could see in Iconics, 25th Anniversary. I could see in a supplemental product, even. Maybe like a conspiracy type of product. Uh, it just seems like something, because it's an artifact, it has charge counters. Uh, it seems like something that would be reprinted in 
it couldn't be reprinted in standard because it has charge counters. That would be very strange unless they bought back the whole charge counter stuff. Next and lastly, here we see a kind of a rise in cryptic command. It dipped down to about below $25 and now it's back to $33. Sometimes when you look at the cards like this and they're just overall very strong, they just have to get into the right meta. Uh, the triple blue is very difficult to cast, so you do need something that will allow you to do that. Anyway, let me know. Uh, these are nine cards that have recently gone up in price. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. Bye, guys.